Welcome everyone to Texture, Basics and Blender Episode 1. Today we're going to have a quick overview of basic navigation in Blender as well as we're going to create our first material using Blender's procedural node system. By default your startup will probably look something like this when you open the Blender file. If you don't have Blender you can click the link in my description which will take you directly to Blender's official page. There you can download Blender and follow the instructions. To navigate in Blender we can either use the middle mouse button by holding holding it down and then moving our mouse to look around. Alternatively, if you're using a laptop, I find that using these ZXY axes over here, which looks like a ball when your mouse is over it, and if you move this, you can move like that. You can also, to zoom in and out, you can left click this magnifying glass and you can just scroll your wheel to zoom in and out. You can also, if you're on a touchpad, you can just left click it and then pull it back and forth. Next up, we have this hand symbol, which allows you to pan around the Blender 3D viewport. Now, it's a tradition in the Blender community to always delete the default cube. So to do that, I'm gonna press A for all to select everything. Then I'm gonna press X to delete. Now, we want to add a new object into our scene. So I'm gonna press the Shift key, hold it, and then press A, and this will bring up my admin. Then I'm gonna hover over Mesh here, and I'm gonna go into this menu. I'm not clicking anything I'm just hovering with my mouse I'm gonna left click cube now I've added in my cube you can see it has an orange highlighter that means this object is selected to select your object simply left click it you'll notice if you left click away from the object it'll become unselected so let's left click it again. If an object is select but it has a red outline, it's selected but it isn't the active object. The active object being the object which you can edit using this menu here. This menu is called the properties. With multiple selected objects, we can perform other operations together such as going to edit mode or deleting. In this property menu here, we're going to left click on this checkered sphere down at the bottom. This is called our material properties window. Another menu that we'll be using a lot throughout this course is called the shader editor menu. This editor menu is quite a bit bigger, so I'm going to drag up my timeline here uh, just by left clicking at the top here and just dragging my mouse or my touchpad. Now at the far left, you can see a clock shape. That essentially is the symbol to represent the timeline, but we're not doing any animating today, so we're gonna switch to a different workspace. So I'll left click on the clock and I'm gonna come under general and I'm gonna left click shader editor. As you may have noticed, both the shader editor and the material properties one have a plus new option. This does the exact same thing and if I press plus new in one of these you can see that both these menus have updated. This is because we're in the same object so these are essentially different ways of altering the material. Now over here in the materials properties you can see we've got a bunch of parameters here which we can edit to change our cube. Let's go ahead and change the base color to blue. I'm going to click on this white square here and this is going to open up my color menu. Then I can just left click and drag around and select this really deep blue color. You will also notice that in the shader editor, it is updated automatically. The material properties is essentially representing this shader here called the principal BSDF. Now in order to see our material, we're going to go into another viewing. So we've got four viewing modes. First one is called wire. This allows us to see our mesh in a wire view. There's also a button up here called the X-ray. And what that does is allow us to see through the object. If I turn this off, you can see it's still a wire, but I can't see through it. Next up, we've got solid mode. This is the default setting in Blender. We can also use the X-ray for this one too. Um, and as you can see, we can now see through our object. The final two are called the material preview and the render. The rendered view will, will give us a rough idea of how our final render will look. Material preview allows us to view our material in a manner which is much quicker than the rendered. So I'm gonna click on this one here. Now you can see our blue has appeared. Great, so now we can see what our result will look like more or less when we change our parameters. Now for now, I'm just gonna change my color back to completely white. To do this, I'll left click my base color in one of these menus. I can just take the saturation value and either left click it and type in zero, or you can just drag it down. Saturation essentially controls how intense a color is. So when the saturation is zero, it can only be white or black or any shades of gray in between. Now I'm gonna quickly go over some of the parameters in this principal BSDF shader. So I'm going to left click this metallic and set it to one. And now you can see that our surface looks a little different. We can make our metal more shiny by simply turning down our roughness to zero. This will make a mirror effect. The important thing to remember with metal is that it should only really be zero or one. Anything in between is kind of impossible. And there are only very few exceptions where this would be used. Roughness, however, though, we can set to any value we wish. You can see as we increase our roughness, the reflectivity gets less and 
around less. This is because the surface is rougher and so when the light hits it, it will bounce around more than if the material was completely smooth. Now if we take a look in our shader editor, making sure our cube is selected if you have another object in the scene. Like I explained earlier, we can edit various settings in here and it will affect it since these two menus are essentially sync. So I'll turn the roughness up and you can see it changes. The shader editor is brilliant because it allows us to visualize the workings behind our material in a sectioned manner using nodes. Now by default when we created our material it added a principled BSDF shader and a material output which determines what we see in the 3D viewport. Notice if I left click my material output in my shader editor and press X to delete you'll notice that the cube will go completely black and it'll have no form of shading applied. So to undo that, I'll just press Ctrl and then Z. Same thing will also happen if we disconnect our shader from the surface here. To do that, we can just left click the socket and drag it out. So as you can see, that wire was connecting the two. So I can just drag from this BSDF here and connect it to the surface. So if this is a material, then what exactly is a texture? Well, in Blender, when we make something in the shader editor or the material's properties, we're creating a material using Blender's node system. However, a texture is an image which we can use in Blender, in the shader editor, and in other software, such as game engines. Blender also comes in with built-in textures, which we can use to create what is called a Blender procedural texture, which is a texture created just using the built-in nodes in Blender, and not relying on external images or texture paint. To add in one of these built-in textures, we're going to open up the Add menu again by holding down Shift and then pressing A, but this time in the Shader Editor. Then I'm going to hover over Texture, I'm still not clicking anything, just hovering, and you can see we've got quite a few textures here. Today we're just going to work with the Voronoi texture, the Voronoi texture. You'll have to excuse my poor pronunciation for some of these nodes. Now, a node we're going to be using when we're making procedural textures a lot, or just textures in general is a free add-on built into Blender called the Node Wrangler. It's super simple to add, all we're going to do is left click Edit, then left click Preferences, left click on the Add-ons tab, left click the search bar, type in Node, N-O-D-E, and you can see we've got Node Wrangler here. I've already got it enabled, but if you don't, just left click that tick box there. Then you can left click these three bars down in the bottom left hand corner of the menu, and just left click Save Preferences. Now I'm just going to press X to close this menu. Now Node Wrangler has a really cool feature which allows us to temporarily view the material without permanently disrupting the material we're making. So to use this view fun function, I'll just press Ctrl, Shift and left click on this Veronai texture. You can have a wee mess around with these parameters here. You see we've got quite a few options. You can mess around with these uh, scale and randomness values and you can see it will update the texture here. Also change the randomness to make things more uniform or random. You also notice there is a color and position circle. We call these sockets in Blender. I'm going to press Ctrl Shift and left click on the yellow one and now we can see what the color looks like. We're not going to worry about the blue circle just now. Today we're going to be using the first one, which is distance, to create a nice circle pattern. So I'm going to press Ctrl Shift left click on the distance. If it goes down to position, just press it again. Before we make our material, I'm going to give you a couple more examples. So I'm going to press Shift and then A to open the Add menu. Then under Texture, I'll left click Musgrave Texture. Now I'll press Ctrl Shift left click on this one. You can see we've got another type of texture which we can use for making our own materials. I'll press Shift and then A again and this time I'm going to add Image Texture. Now this texture is usually how we would import images to use within our material. This would commonly be used with uh, texture bakes. We will be covering how baking works and how to do it in the next episode. To delete my nodes I just left click them and press X. I'm going to control shift and left click on my Verona again. Now if I want to replace my base colour with this texture, we very simply drag the distance and insert it into the base colour socket. Now if I control shift and left click on the principal BSDF, you can see we've got these dots here that are affecting our metal material. I'm going to turn my metal value back down to zero since we're not making a metallic material today. So I'll left click it and then type in zero. Now since I'm making a kind of spotty wallpaper material, I want these circles to be a little bit more pronounced because as you can see at the moment, they're just dots with a little bit of a gradient around them. So to do that, I'm going to need a little bit more control in between my Veronai texture and my principal BSDF. 
So to do that, we're going to use a node called the color ramp. So I'll hold down shift, then A, and under converter, I'll left click on color ramp. Then I can just drag this in between these two nodes and it'll appear here. Now, nothing will change straight away, but as we alter this bar here, I can just drag one of these along. And you can see that's making things more pronounced. So I recommend having a play about with this. So in order to make these circles sharper, I'm simply going to left click this black slider here and just pull it towards the white one. I'm then going to drag my white value closer to the black one to create a nice bit of contrast. That should do nicely. Now another cool feature about the color ramp is the ability to actually alter the base color. So as you might imagine, the white slider here represents all the white color on this material. So if I were to change this, it would change the material where it's white. If I press Ctrl Z to undo that, I'm going to create a nice gold color for this black here. So I'll turn up the brightness and I'll go for a kind of orangey yellow color and I'll turn down the value by left clicking on this grey slider. I'm just going to alter it till I find something I like. So quite orangey looks quite good. So if you want to get the exact same number that I'm using, I'm going to left click on this option called hex. Now hex code is like a combination of letters and numbers which represents each type of color in the RGB system. So you can literally type this in to your hex code and you'll get the exact same color as me. I'm now going to alter my roughness and I'm going to change it to 0.5. So left click it and type in 0.5. Awesome, so now we've got our spotty wallpaper texture. But what if I wanted to add another material to this object? How would I go about doing that? Well, technically we could do it within this same material, but for now I'm going to show you a much easier way. So I'm going to come up to my material properties window and you can see there's a plus and a minus button. If I were to left click this minus button, it would remove this material. So I don't want to do that, so I'm going to left click the plus button. I'm also going to name my material as well, so I'll left click on my material.001 again. Might just be material for you. I'm going to left click the name here. I'm going to call it Spotty Wallpaper. Then I'm going to left click on my new material, which is blank just now. In fact, it's not even a material yet, it's just a slot. So I'll click plus new in one of these menus again. And I'm then going to need to assign this material to one of these faces. So right now it's a default material, which is just a white base color. And by default, the roughness is at 0.5, which is just what we need. So I'm going to press tab into edit mode and I'm going to press free on the keyboard. And this will allow me to select one of these faces. So I'm going to left click one of these faces here, left click my second material on the materials properties, then simply assign. And what that's done is assigned this material here to this face on the object. You can do this for as many faces as you want, but I'm just going to do it with one face just now. By default, you can just press tab to quickly change between edit and object. But I've got a special feature which allows me to change this in a more controlled way. I'm going to go back to my spotty wallpaper because I want to have the same colour as these dots on the square. So I'm going to left click my gold slider and left click the colour here and I'm going to left click on our hex value. This will automatically highlight it. I'm going to press and hold control and then C and that's going to copy it. Then I'm going to left click on my material.001, left click base colour, then under hex. I'm just going to left click to highlight and then press Ctrl and then V to paste. Now you can see our square is now gold. Great, so now let's review what we've learned today. Number one, what is a material? Number two, what two menus did we use today to add color to an object? Number three, what is a texture? You can pause the video and take time to answer them and I'll be answering the questions in around 15 seconds from now. Number one, what is a mate material? Is something we create in Blender to alter the colour of our object and add unique patterns. What two menus did we use today to add colour to our object? The first one was the materials properties window. This allowed us to make quick edits to our material. The second editor was called the shader editor. This allowed us to have more complex control over our material. What is a texture? 
A texture is an image, whether built into Blender or external, which we can use over multiple types of software to edit certain parameters of a shader. Today, we use the Voronoi texture to edit the appearance of our base color with the help of the color ramp. Great job for sticking to the end of the tutorial. And if you want to leave your answers down in the comment section, I'd be happy to have a look and mark them. Also feel free to type any questions you may have about this tutorial and I'll do my best to answer them. In the next video, we're going to cover how to bake our materials, which is essentially converting this spotty texture we've made using two materials onto a single image, which we could then use in other engines or in a new Blender file. Great job today everyone and thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.